Welcome, everybody. Hi, guys. So many folks coming in. This is great. Hey, hey. So many familiar, friendly names and faces. Hey, y'all. This is wonderful. All right. There we go. There we go. More and more coming in. Okay. Um, well, um, you know, this is only a 30 minute training. It's really just to go over the logistics um, and then get everyone shifted and signed up four times um, so that we can get ready and rocking and rolling. Um, we've got a bunch of our hosts in here as well, which is um, wonderful to see. Um, so, so, you know, try to remember these names because this is our, this is our team right now, y'all. These are like, these are, you know, you're the brave ones that are going to be hitting the streets and Obviously, we'll make sure you have everything you need to be, um, you know, safe while doing so. And um, we're doing this in a very kind of distributed, decentralized manner. Otherwise, you know, normally we'd be sending you to doors. We'd be sending you out into just big group gatherings, but not really allowed to do any of that stuff right now. So this is how we're going to go forth. Um, so, so, but I'm really excited. We've got a really wonderful team of folks who are, who are stepping up to help out. So um, just still admitting a few, few people right now. So we're going to be getting started and just a second. Um, welcome, Jerusalem. Got a bunch of folks came in. Okay, cool. Um, so I'll just keep an eye on uh, folks as they come in, but we are recording this as well. So if you uh, would rather not be included in the recording, just close your camera um, and then, you know, your face won't show up. Um, and we're also really just making sure that it's the um, actual presentation that's going to be shared with other people who are on not able to make tonight's meeting. So don't worry as well um, about any of that, but also let me know. Um, and we can also just edit you out if you would really make like to make sure your name and anything else is not included. Um, all right, so um, just a couple more folks coming in. Um, I think we can get started. So again, um, hey everyone, welcome. My name is Sam. Um, we've probably talked before, um, see a lot of familiar faces on here. So um, I'm here with, with uh, my deputy Morgan. Um, Morgan, if you wanna give a quick hi. Hi guys, I'm Morgan. <laughs> nice to meet you all. Um, we're really excited to get going. Um, Tahani's super stoked uh, to be hitting the streets tomorrow herself to collect petitions. Um, uh, we've got a really wonderful group of folks who are going to be working on this, helping to lead. Our neighborhood captains are really wonderful. I did the rounds yesterday and got to meet all them in person and drop all the materials off so they're all good to go to get y'all rocking and rolling. Um, so I think we can jump right in. So um, just a kind of quick overview, you know, we need, we have um, between tomorrow, which is the official day to start gathering petitions, and then March 21st, the action, some of you, um, you know, if you've, if you're, you know, been to the election website may see that the filing deadline really is like March 24th, um, but we are actually setting a goal to get all our petitions done by the March 21st. So that our lawyer, Ali, can go through all of them, make sure we have all our duckies in a row before he files them officially to get Tahani on the ballot so that we can all vote for her in, um, in, 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 in June. If you are a, a Manhattan voter, I'm unfortunately a Brooklyn voter myself, so I won't be able to vote for her, but I can, I'm still going to be collecting petitions. Um, and, you know, New York City is New York City. It's kind of kind of silly that we break up the DAs this way, but you know, it's how, how jurisdictions go. Um, she's still going to be my DA. Um, <laughs> so, all right. Well, um, 1200 is how many we need, but our goal is 4,800. Um, and so, you know, we've calculated it such where, you know, if we get the right amount of folks signed up and registered and out in the streets collecting petitions, we can do this within, within our three week period. Um, and so right now we're kind of anticipating about 20 petitions per hour um, as our rate of, oops, admitting more folks, um, as our rate of collection, um, but we'll see. And, you know, our first few rounds of petitioning are really gonna teach us whether, you know, we think that's too low or too high. Um, you know, I really can't say I haven't been able to go out and collect myself because not legally allowed to, but um, we also just haven't done as much canvassing because of the COVID restrictions on, um, you know, our, our ability to do that kind of stuff. Um, so this will be a really big test. And please, if anybody really just want to pre preface that, if at any point you feel uncomfortable out there, um, please do not be afraid, just call it a day. You know, we really, really don't want anybody risking themselves. We don't want anybody feeling uncomfortable while they're out doing this work. It's really, really important work, but your health comes first. Please remember that and please just let me or your host know at any time if you do feel uncomfortable um, while you're collecting. Um, 
So with that, I think we can jump right into the nitty gritty. Um, so if you wanna kick us off on the next slide. So let's go over some of the requirements. So to be a petition collector, you need to be a registered Democrat in New York state. So you can be from Rochester, you can be from all the way from Buffalo, you can, and you can still collect down in New York City to get to Haney on the ballot. You just need to be a registered Democrat in New York State. Um, the signer has to be a Manhattan Democrat. They have to be registered within the county of New York, um, what we know as Manhattan, and they have to be a, a, a Democrat. Um, and then uh, for the, the next big piece that I really, really want to emphasize is that signers can only sign one candidate's petition sheet. So if, if you are approach someone and you say, hey, can you sign this? And they're like, hey, I think I signed this for, you know, one of your opponents, they're uneligible to sign ours. So we really want to get out early and fast with these as well, um, you know, and um, and so that's just a really important, important note to make that if someone says that they had already signed one for another DA candidate, they can't sign ours. It's not worth, you know, wasting the ink or the, the petition line on that. So really wanna make sure you clarify that with someone um, and, and always really be good to, to double check with them on that. Um, but you can collect multiple candidate, put multiple candidates for different offices at a time. So if you've got your favorite mayor, uh, mayor candidate, you got your favorite city council candidate, um, you can go and collect for those candidates and and um, Tahani as well at the same time. There's no uh, rules around collecting for multiple candidates at a time, just so long as that person hasn't signed for other candidates. So just like how it applies to our race, if someone signed for Diane Morales's, they can't sign for Scott Stringer's. Um, you know, or anybody else, you know, so, so just, just to clarify that while you're collecting, but if you want to collect for, you know, mayoral candidates and to Haney at this, or a, sorry, a mayoral candidate and to Haney at the same time, um, you can do that. And it's highly encouraged because it's, you know, really easy way to just kind of knock these out too, um, you know. Um, all right. Um, and then where to collect. So this is something that our petition captains um, have been tasked with figuring out the best spots to um, in their neighborhoods, but just generally speaking, public places, subway stops, parks, grocery stores, deli and bodegas. Quick note, bodega cats are ineligible. As much as I wish that I could go and canvas every single bodega cat, and trust me, I do try to spend my free time meeting bodega cats, don't get me wrong, um, but they are unfortunately ineligible signers. Um, but just try to think of places, particularly places where residents live. Um, that brings me to, to the next um, piece. Um, your building and your neighbors are great if you're comfortable with it. Like I said, we're not giving anybody walk packets that you would normally get when you go canvassing for candidates, but if you're comfortable going around your building, that's highly encouraged, especially if you know the folks, your neighbors as well. It's always easier to talk to people that you know um, than it is to talk to total strangers. Um, but um, definitely avoid tourist areas. Try to think of places where you know residents live. So like I said, grocery stores are great. Um, delis are great. Just the places where we all know and love our favorite spots in the neighborhood that you know are really just kind of neighborhood only um, areas. So avoid Times Square basically is what I'm saying. Um, um, and, and, you know, some of the major parks, but, um, you know, smaller parks, I mean, really any, just ask and make sure that they're, you know, a resident. Um, okay, next slide. Um, so actual signing. So let's talk through the petition itself. So this is a picture of one of our actual petitions. Um, so you can see uh, the Tahani's name is on there, the office that she's running for. Um, oh, what's that, Jim? Yeah, exactly. Housing projects. That's a really good point back to the, the um, piece of where those are really great places. So if you have access to those places, you know, people that can let you in. Those are really, really good spots as well. Um, so Everson please. Town will definitely be democratic and a lot of traffic. For sure. For sure. Yeah, really you good. You have point. to be inside the buildings. Exactly. Yeah. So if you can get access to it, um, that would be really great. So but um, you know, we are, we are, and also, you know, we are going to be doing a lot to try to get into these buildings later on. Once kind of COVID rates die, die down, we're going to have a big, big plan for accessing these bigger buildings because, you know, that's just how you do it in Manhattan. Um, um, that's also a good point, Emily. If, if places, you know, if you're able to walk in, um, 
like I said, you know, um, whatever you're comfortable with, you know, so, 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 you know, in, in any place that you, you know, are able to get into safely. Um, but um, bringing us back to the, um, no, so Menzer, we're not going to be door to door right now. We will eventually once COVID rates settle down. Um, I'm even talking with some other campaigns. A lot of folks, you know, we're, we're all figuring it out together. Just so you know, like behind the scenes, a lot of these campaigns, we are making sure that you know we're all being cognizant of what other, you know, we're we're asking other folks to do. Everyone's kind of agreed for now. We're going to wait on on actual door to door um, until things, you know, we have a better pulse on things. Petitioning is really going to help us get a good sense of all of that though. Um, so for now, you know, we're trying to keep it to open space areas um, or well-ventilated areas just to be, you know, aware, you know, aware of the potential risks associated with doing that. Um, but that that's, yeah. But I see your hand, Minzer. So yeah, no, what I, what I, the reason I ask is firstly, because Jim had, you know, mentioned housing projects. And I think housing projects are a gold mine, actually. Um, yeah. But A, it's a matter of A, getting in. Go housing projects would mean go, going door to door that's yeah. why and, and 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 i just want to like like from my experience like with regards to getting into a building just like buzz like for me and my experience buzz every single buzzer somebody is bound to like respond when they respond make up something like delivery you know it's <laughs> <laughs> Menzer is a seasoned, seasoned city canvasser. These are all I, I, the. I'm not, I'm not the only person who does this. Also, like I like I've seen other people do this thing. I yeah. only I only learn, you know, like I only learn from observation. <laughs> totally. No, it's, it's it's yeah. Um. Oh yeah. So Jim, you will get so you will get flyers, Jim, from your your petitioning captain. But Menzer, I. Yeah, yeah. I'm actually, I'm gonna we're gonna connect because I would I would love to have you help help give some tips for when we really really go hard with door to door. Like I said, y'all, I'm not gonna tell you not to go door to door. Um, you know, because if you're comfortable with it, go ahead. You know, this is really one of those gray areas where if you're comfortable with it, you know, this is this is something that you know you're more than welcome to do. Um, but just because you know us as a campaign, you know, we we're not going to be you know actively cutting lists to give out to folks. But if you have a building you're comfortable going door to door in, you know, please definitely go ahead. You know, it's it's really just kind of whatever you're comfortable with. Um, it's really particular, you know, we got, this is how we win and we gotta, we gotta talk to these people. Um, but it's a, it's a gray area that we're all just trying to navigate. So, you know, really just putting the deference on y'all for whatever you're comfortable with, so. Um, but, but definitely let me know if you are able to get into buildings, keep me posted on how it goes and everything um, and whatnot. So, um, Other what, place, yeah, go ahead, in addition to the housing projects, again, this is gonna be tricky, you know, um, mm -hmm. you know, the other place where I know where it's like a very good, like it's a, it, it's a gold mine if the person who's leading the congregation is receptive to you being there mm -hmm. is our mosque, churches, and temples, synagogues, yeah. because at that point, you don't have to say anything at all whatsoever. You just go and you speak to the, 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 the imam, or I'm a Muslim, if it's the imam, if he's receptive towards you, he's not even going to ask that many questions. He'll just go to before his congregation and be like, okay, this is like, before we start or, ever, or like afterwards, do we have, I want to make an announcement. Can you? And like, people will rush to sign up. I, <laughs> I kid you not. It's like, it's awesome. It's like, <laughs> but again, the challenge that we have now is it's it's COVID. So like, how do we do it in a? I don't know. Totally. No, totally. You're so right. And we are, you know, Manzarel. I will say we've we've got, um, you know, a very very you know um, you know active strategy for engaging all the religious leaders. And um, one of our big, I'll just give you all now. I've been talking to Tahani, you know, with Ramadan coming up in the spring and, and the, the kind of open air, um, you know, and dinners and everything that they're going to have, you know, really, really going to go big with canvassing those and everything like that, you know, um, so, so definitely emphasize everything you're saying is spot on um, with all that and, and um, you know, hopefully they'll be able to reopen, you know, religious congregations and everything, which will, you know, make our, our ability to engage folks, you know, in, in large numbers a lot easier. So definitely. Um, okay. We do have a spot for Q&A at the end. So these are really, really good questions. We're just going to hold till then. Um, but, but we're, you know, put them in the chat. I'll be able to get to them there and, and then we'll, you know, open it up. But just to kind of get us through the, the final pieces um, for signing, um, it's really, really easy. You know, this is what the petition looks like. Um, and then, you know, you want to fill it in. And this is something that we are asking all 
the actual petition gatherers to do um, in this order. So when you're talking to someone, you wanna write the date, um, and then you want to write their name where it says their printed name, then you want to write their address, and then you hand it over to them to sign. So we want to collect the, we want to be the ones writing the date, the name, and their address, and then all they should have to do is sign. This will, you know, help, you know, decrease the amount of contact that you have with them, um, but also make the uh, just handwriting a little consistent for when we then do digitization of these petitions, um, you know, just so it's not a million different hand, uh, you know, <laughs> different hand styles writing um, these that, that can be really tricky when you're really trying to do data entry for these. Um, but that's it. So once they do that, oh, and then really quick note, um, do not include apartment number. We do not need to include it. It's not legally required. We're just looking for street address. If we include their apartment number, it's just another data point that could potentially be challenged, especially if somebody writes down the wrong number or you know they just hear the wrong thing. It's something that we just want to avoid because it's not required. So, and we don't want to do anything that's not required for us right now. Um, um, and there, I see your hand. Is it related to this exact yeah, so, piece? Okay, yeah, go, go for it. Yeah. The yeah. one thing that I would like to highlight um, is that it's very, I, I don't like, from my experience, this, this came up when we were doing uh, a petition for Tiffany last year. Mm -hmm. It matters where the signature goes and where the printed name goes. I guess yes. it, yeah. it might sound stupid and whatnot, mm -hmm. but like, if they if they like sign if they print their name on the top if they if they if they don't if they start printing their name on the top and printing in the bottom or sign in the bottom, just get rid of that line and have yeah. them go down. It's annoying and whatnot, but like it's better to like make sure that you know their signature actually counts for something as opposed to like, oh well we don't know if they did this because like. <laughs> You're exactly right. You're exactly right. Yeah. The, the, yeah. These are the things that we need to keep in mind because, you know, I mean, I, I, there hasn't been a, a pledge among the candidates. I mean, I can say personally that Tahani will not be challenging anybody's petition signatures, but because this is not a ranked choice voting race, um, you know, things and they already have, but they, you know, they could get a little hostile, um, you know, and we really don't want to, uh, you know, allow for any chance of somebody challenging our petitions and then end up having a bunch be, you know, wrong. So exactly what Menzer said about making sure that they sign um, on, you know, the appropriate lines and everything. Um, cool. And then once you collect all those, then you do the witness part and we'll then run through that. And so this is what you fill out after you've collected all of the petitions on that sheet, you finish that sheet. Then you put your name with the name of witness, and this is all on the petition sheet is, um, you put your address, um, you know, where you are registered to vote, and then the number of signatures on that sheet that have been filled out that are, um, you know, from, from registered voters, the date you collected, and then this, your signature. So it's really easy, you know, this is probably the easiest part of the sheet, but it has to be filled out because it's the statement of witness. It's the, you know, legal verification that this, you know, you as a registered voter in the state of New York, registered Democrat in the state of New York, um, have collected these petitions yourself. So, um, so that's everything for signing. Um, and then next is our neighborhood captains. So these are all the different places that we have um, the opportunity for you to uh, sign up and, and um, start collecting petitions. And um, we also have Lower East Side, that's being coordinated by the Democratic Club, um, CODA, Coalition for a District Alternative. Um, they're really, really great. And because they endorsed us, they're gonna be taking on a lot of that work. And we also really wanna encourage all Lower East Side folks to join their or, um, Democratic Club as well, because they are really, really great crew. Um, you know, I, I, I've been doing a lot of campaign work. And one of the things that always kind of bums me out about afterwards, after a campaign, is we do all this work, you know, to, to, you know, build up these organizers to get all these folks trained and involved the campaigns. And then, you know, there's nothing really for them to plug into after. So, you know, we really want to then, you know, encourage folks to plug into the groups that are supporting us. Um, so Lower East Side, we're going to be emailing out, they're figuring out their petition events that are most likely going to be happening this weekend. They're going to let me know. I'll let all of you all know if you want to sign up for Lower East Side, um, I'll, I'll be in touch, but that will be through their organization. Um, so that's why it's not listed here, but that's doesn't mean that Lower East Side isn't a major, major priority for us. Um, 
but just to kind of go through, we got Rachel in Washington Heights, Inwood. Um, we got Autumn in the Upper East Side. Uh, we got John in Hell's Kitchen. Um, we got Eli in, in Financial District, Emily in North Harlem, Max in South Harlem. I know that the neighborhood's more like Central and East Harlem, but they're kind of, you know, Matt, Emily's in the Northern part of Central Harlem. Max is in the Southern part of, of South Harlem. There, there they are, there's some of the, the folks right now. Um, they're all super duper awesome. Um, and then we got Upper West Side with Samara who's um, got a, a few shifts already for tomorrow. So she's ready to rock and roll. Um, so those are the neighborhoods. Um, you can also find those and all the different signups for them um, on, on the um, website page, which I'm just pulling up right now. Um, which you can sign up for, but we're actually going to get everyone shifted on this call right now because I want to lock you all in since you're here now and you're freshly trained. Um, oh, there's the Lower East Side one. Yeah, perfect. Um, so um, let's do a quick Q&A just so anybody can, can clarify pieces and then we'll do breakout rooms and then Morgan and I are going to shift you all. So um, do a few minutes for Q&A. So, so go for it. Throw it in the chat or just unmute yourself. Um, I think there's there's um, you know, a small enough crew where, you know, if you just unmute and go, for it, um, you know, should be good. Um, so feel free to ask away if you've got any. I have a quick question about signatures. If someone signs and then afterwards says that they've already signed a petition for DA, do we need to cross out that name and put our signature on the lines? Um, is it, is it just going to be left there and then it'll just be removed when it's counted? Like what's the process for making sure that that doesn't mess up anything? Yeah, exactly, exactly what you said. Um, you, you will have to cross it out very visibly. Um, we'll also make sure to, you know, if, if you just kind of do a quick X, you know, I'm going to be getting all the petition sheets and have them and looking through them um, before I give them to our, our lawyer, to, lawyer to file. So I will double check those, but that's exactly right, Leah. Yeah, that's the exact process for that. Cool, anybody have any more questions? All right. Um, well, you know, I, y'all, I think my phone number is in the follow-up emails for when you sign up, but, um, you know, I'll just drop it in here. Um, you will see that I do have a Massachusetts area code. Um, I will admit I am originally from the Boston area, um, but I have been living in New York for quite a time now. So, um, you know, I, I, it's definitely my new home, but don't judge me for having Massachusetts area code. Uh, <laughs> um, but perfect. All right. Well, we're going to just do quick breakout rooms, get everyone shifted, and then um, y'all be on your way. So um, let me just do that right now. And then let me just make sure that Morgan and I are put in two separate rooms. Perfect. All right. So you should be able to join your breakout rooms. So go ahead, accept that uh, request, and then Morgan and I will shift y'all from there. <laughs> 